along with some of the rest of you, I've been reading this uh, men's devotional this year. Some of you might recognize this, but um, t- reading that I read recently was called In the Driver's Seat. And uh, Joe Stoll says, I enjoy the story of the stressed out woman who was tailgating a man on a busy boulevard. When the man slowed to a stop at a yellow light, the woman hit the horn, cussing and screaming in frustration and gesturing angrily. Still in mid-rant, she heard a tap on her window. It was a police officer who ordered her to exit the car. He took her to the police station and placed her in a holding cell. An hour later, the officer returned and said, I'm sorry, ma'am, there's been a big mistake. When I saw how you were acting, and then I saw your what would Jesus do license plate holder, and your follow me to church bumper sticker, I assumed the car must be stolen. Satan wants to see Christians who don't act like they belong to Jesus. If he can get us to live like the ungodly, he knows we will dishonor the name of Christ in the process. Here's a better way. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So when I read that, I thought about our theme today of sharing God, sharing our love for Jesus. And um, as we get into that, I'd like to... uh, have you look at the foundational passage that we've been looking at for the last several weeks, Ephesians 3. It says, I pray that you, would you read it with me? And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. So we have been looking um, at how we can be rooted and established in the love of God. And uh, some of you might remember that we started out by talking about the importance of knowing the Lord. And to know the Lord is more than knowing about the Lord, knowing all the right uh, catechism questions that you might have learned back in, as a kid, uh, but to know Jesus Christ in a personal way. And what a blessing it's been in our church to see people come to faith, come to know the Lord over the years. And I I, I never get tired of seeing people come to the knowledge of Christ. But another aspect of our love of God as we seek to establish it in our lives is to, to hear God's voice and to learn to hear, to listen to God. And we talked about that. And then the next week we talked about talking with God and how prayer once we know the Lord, involves both listening or hearing and talking. And then we, lo- we looked at the matter of serving the Lord and how important that is that we serve the Lord and that we uh, learn to walk with the Lord on a regular basis. It's not just occasionally that we serve, but it's a matter of our daily walk as you have received Christ, so walk in him. Uh, today, uh, we're looking at the matter of sharing God with other people and as I I speak today I welcome you at all the campuses let's welcome each other right now shall we I am away this weekend participating in the Upper New York Conference Board of Ordained Ministry interviews of new clergy I think we're interviewing 19 uh, potential pastors this weekend and so I'm with you by uh, video technology in each situation this is not a a warm getaway it's someplace between Syracuse and Binghamton every time I've been there we got hit by major snowstorms so uh, don't wish that you were there necessarily Uh, when we talk about sharing God I I have a statement in your notes if you haven't already taken them out if you would please that a Christian disciple who shares God is someone who meets knows and follows Jesus to meet Jesus, as I, I already said, is a matter of knowing him. Um, have you been introduced to Jesus Christ? And if so, um, how has that made a difference in your life? So, so you meet the Lord and then you come to know the Lord. And I believe that as we know the Lord, we grow in our knowledge of the Lord. Can you say that today you know the Lord better than you did a year ago right now or a week ago right now? Is there a, a growing process in your life Um, the longer you know him the longer you love him the longer you serve him 
the more meaningful a part of your life that is. Remember the, the musical God's Fell uh, day by day, day by day. Oh, dear Lord, three things I pray to see thee more clearly, to love thee more dearly, to follow thee more dear, more nearly day by day. And that concept of following the Lord more nearly is is what we're really uh, emphasizing uh, today. Um, when I think about sharing God, I think about a very simple formula that we're taught in Closer Walk weekends. And we've had a couple hundred people from PAUMC participate in Closer Walk weekends. By the way, there's a weekend coming up this month of March and another one, women, coming up in April. If you have any questions, you're interested, talk to your campus leader about that. But the, the concept of sharing God can be boiled down in the Closer Walk teaching to three things, to make a friend, to be a friend, to bring a friend to Christ. And, and that's so important. That's friendship evangelism. It's sometimes called relational evangelism. Um, I was reminded of a song I learned as a new Christian uh, that the title was Two Hands. And uh, we're given two hands. One, uh, uh, you, you use your two hands as you accept Jesus with your whole heart. With one hand, you reach out to Jesus. With the other, you bring a friend. And so we're called to reach to Jesus and then be able to to bring a friend and to share God with a friend to introduce our friend to Jesus Christ. And it is your responsibility, my responsibility, our responsibility to bring Jesus to other people. So that's sharing God. For that to happen, uh, I don't know who said this first, if it is to be, it is up to me. Say that with me. If it is to be, it is up to me. If sharing God is to take place, it's up to you and me. The song that we will be listening to during communion today, and I hope more than listen to, you'll sing along with it wholeheartedly, with all your heart, is The Mission by Steve Green. To love the Lord our God is the heartbeat of our mission, the spring from which our service overflows. Across the street or around the world, the mission's still the same, to proclaim and live the truth in Jesus' name. When I think about sharing God, I'm reminded of a, of a story that occurs in Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 27 through 32. It, it involves uh, Levi being called by Jesus to follow the Lord. And it says this, After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax booth. Jesus said to Levi, follow me. And he got up, left everything and followed Jesus. Then Levi gave a great banquet for him in his house. There was a large crowd of tax collectors and others sitting at the table with them. The Pharisees and their scribes were complaining to Jesus' disciples saying, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And it says after this, what was going on just before that in, in Luke chapter 5 is that where people were coming to Jesus to be healed. They were seeking after Jesus. Isn't it interesting in this case, it's Jesus who goes out and calls this man Levi. We don't know if they had a a historic relationship before that, if he already knew this Levi, he says, hey, follow me, and Levi does. And that's kind of a mystery to know what, is, what exactly had transpired before that. So in the context of other people coming to Jesus, Jesus reaches out and shares God with Levi. Um, interesting to, to look a little more in depth at this story, and I would lift up to you several ways. I, I counted six ways uh, that, w based on w Jesus' experience with Levi, that uh, we can share God in a natural way. So that it's not being weird or pushy, but just in a natural, uh, non threatening way. First of all, we learn from Jesus to move toward people who have questionable morality. Doesn't that go against our grain as religious people 
to go reach out to people with questionable morality. He was certainly called to task by the religious leaders and the Pharisees and the scribes. What are you doing hanging around with those people? You know, and, and Jesus had time for those people. We, we're going to be looking in a, in a moment a little more in-depth at one of those people in John's Gospel, Chapter 4, uh, the woman at the well. And we're going to come back to her in a second. But also, I think about John, Chapter 8. The woman's caught in adultery. And the religious leaders, were, they were just gleeful. They, they got Jesus. They're, gonna, they're really going to catch him this time because they throw her at Jesus' feet. This woman was caught in the very act of adultery. By the way, where was the guy? And uh, the law says stone her. What do you say? And Jesus said, well, whoever with you doesn't have a sin, you throw the first stone. And they just kind of all slithered away. Um, we, we see the example in Luke's Gospel, chapter 15, of the prodigal son. The son who kind of thumbs his nose at his father and says, I wish you were dead. I wish you'd give me my inheritance now. And he takes and he, he leaves and he runs away and he wastes it all. And the father continues to look forward to the son coming back. And it says that when the son finally returns, the father's looking and watching the horizon and he sees his boy coming and he runs to him and he hugs him and embraces him and welcome, welcomes him back into the family. So regardless of people's morality or the mistakes they, they have made, Jesus teaches us to move toward those people, not away from those people. Number two, don't focus on what's wrong with people. I love that Jesus was hanging around this Levi, this guy with questionable repute, has a party. And Jesus is enjoying the party and enjoying the people because those people need God. He helped the people to feel accepted and comfortable around him and loved. Do we help people to feel accepted and comfortable and loved as we engage with them regardless of their lifestyle? You know, do they, they sense an acceptance and a, a a love from us. A third thing that we see about Jesus is that we need to go where people are, even if it's uncomfortable. We're called to be in the world, but not of the world. We're to dare to go into the world. Um, I am I am very fascinated by something that's just developing at our Watkins campus that I want to uh, reinforce. And, it, and the first one of them just happened, but it's called First Fridays on fr or yeah. First Friday's on Franklin. And Franklin Street's the main drag through Watkins. And uh, the merchants, the, the people in Watkins have a big emphasis on getting people on the first Friday to go uh, door to door. Well, they extend Franklin two blocks. So that just includes our church house there. And uh, most of the stops involve alcohol. You know, and you, you pay $10 and you go and you get your ticket punched and you get you take a I think they give you a wine glass you take with you and they fill your glass wherever you go well we aren't going to be offering wine at the church house I'm sorry to, if I disappointed you but we call this our healing and wholeness ministry and we're going to offer a, a family friendly a kid friendly event inviting them to come we're going to have an open mic opportunity uh, kind of a like our food cupboard uh, fundraiser uh, talent or semi-talent but it's open mic and it's uh, games for the kids and uh, we're going to have uh, each of these participants in Friday on Franklin uh, has a, a Watkins vendor the one of our first vendors was a cupcake lady and so we're giving away her cupcakes but they come and they participate and we want people to feel accepted and comfortable and loved as they come to our our church house there right in the village of Watkins Glen. I lift that up as one example. You folks at the mall campus have had a lot of experience at Fresh Start Corner. Now we're just starting to figure out how to use Miracle Mile for outreach. We continue to work at using Pine City Campus for outreach so that um, we can go where the people are and welcome the people, uh, even though it might be a little uncomfortable feeling at first. Another thing that we see Jesus doing is to spend laid back time with people, not always to have an agenda, 
it's not always to lead them to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, but it's just to be real and to be authentic and to, um, uh, as we have said at Life Tree, we love hanging out with you. We want people to feel comfortable and a part of uh, whatever God is using us to do to engage people that are far from God, that could be drawn closer to God. And as we reach out, number five, we seek to balance truth with grace. Um, John says in chapter 1, verse 17, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. Uh, grace and truth came through Jesus. So we have the law. We have the rigid yes, no, black and white, 613 examples of that in the Old Testament. But we see in Jesus the difference between law and gospel, law and the grace of the good news of Jesus Christ. And we want to find that balance. And so we, we love people as they are and invite them to come to a knowledge of Christ. And then the sixth thing that we see Jesus doing is, uh, it says, look around you. He looked out and he saw Levi and he invited Levi, hey, come follow me. And that changed Levi's life. We need to be aware of the people around us. I mentioned the woman at the well. John chapter 4 is devoted to the story of this woman who goes to get water at the well at high noon when no other women would be there so she doesn't have to risk the embarrassment or the social ostracism there. But Jesus is there. He said he had to go through Samaria. It's like he had this divine appointment to meet this woman. And he's there and he uh, engages in conversation with her. And it's fascinating that because he listened to the, the leading of the spirit and he had to go through Samaria when everybody else went out of their way to not go to Samaria, the woman's life was changed dramatically so dramatically that she went back to her village where the people didn't think very highly of her and she spoke of jesus in a way that intrigued them in fact i'd like to read from john 4 just a, a few verses here it says many of the samaritans from that town believed in jesus because of the woman's testimony she said he told me everything i ever did so when the Samaritans came to Jesus, they urged him to stay with them, and he did stay two days. And because of Jesus' words, many more became believers. The people of the village said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves. We know that this man really is the Savior of the world. And so he engaged one woman, and that led to... Uh, whole village being changed people coming to faith uh, and then the disciples uh, come back and they marvel hey what's going on here where did all these people come from and jesus says to them and this is our memory verse would you read it with me i say wake up and look around the fields are already ripe for harvest and where is that john 4 35 and b means it's the second part of that um Jesus is calling them to go out into the fields, not to wait for the people to come to them, but to go to the people and to reach out to them and realize that there's a harvest to be gathered if we're obedient to God's call. Now, I do have a bit of a, a cautionary word or, or a disclaimer, and I say this in love, uh, but he, he does say, uh, in Matthew 10, 16, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. So be as cunning as snakes, but as innocent as doves. He's giving them this caution that I'm sending you out, but you need to be wise. You need to be cunning. Uh, you need to be careful to go as the Spirit leads you. Um, I would say that to you from the standpoint, I, I remember in John chapter 10, he sends 72 disciples out. He sends them two by two. He wants them to have each other's back. He wants them to be accountable to each other. And you go, and, and you go, and if people welcome you, that's the, you bring a blessing. If they 
shun you and they don't receive what you say shake the dust off your feet and go to the next place he wants you to be smart about the way you go and um, to be innocent but to be cunning at the same time and i say that to say uh, be be discreet be use good judgment as to where you go when you when you reach out um, i have known people over the years that um, they tell me that well i'm dating this this non-Christian, because I'm going to lead them to Christ. You know, that missionary dating mindset, you know. Well, I'm going. He told me to go. Well, I'm going to go. Or if you're a recovering alcoholic, you probably don't need to go to the bar to witness, you know, yeah, until you're strong enough to do that or you have a partner to go with you. So, so you, you know your limitations. That you, you, you don't do dumb things, dumb mistakes. Does that make sense? So I, I lift that up to you as a, a word of caution. Um, but we're called to look around and to share God with our world. And uh, as I, I close today in prayer, I'm going to be praying the prayer of St. Francis. Let us pray together. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it's in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen.